what exactly is procedural audio? From my research, I found out that there are many definitions, but perhaps the most appropriate one is given by a British computer scientist and audio engineer, Andy Fernell. Nonlinear, often synthetic sound created in real time according to a set of programmatic rules and live input. In other words, procedural audio is a synthetically generated sound where many parameters of a mathematical model can be changed in real time, thus affecting the sound it produces. By doing so, we give them a behavior and sounds become interactive objects, which is hard to achieve using only static recordings. Although considerable work is involved to create realistic synthetic sounds, the possibilities are endless. Right, if you're still confused, let me use something familiar to all of us as an example. Synthesizers. Most of them have at least a few knobs that allow us to dial in a particular preset or to adjust LFOs, amps and filter cutoffs all in real time to come up with a new and exciting sound textures. Although advanced software and hardware synthesizers can be used to create various ambient soundscapes and even some basic sound effects, they're not sophisticated enough for realistic procedural audio. How can we produce procedural audio? Well, our first option is to use a programming language such as C++, where we would have to write hundreds lines of code to create even a basic synth, certainly no mean feat. Programming approach is used by computer software engineers who implement procedural sound techniques, for example, in a video game engine. For the rest of us, there is a less tedious way of enjoying benefits of procedural audio. Specialized visual flow programming languages like Pure Data and Max MSP take care of the nitty-gritty audio code behind the scenes by exposing objects with relevant methods and allow us to concentrate on the actual sound modeling at a higher level. Objects are placed on a virtual canvas and interconnected. An object, for an instance, can be an oscillator, filter, or an effect, and messages can be used to instruct them to behave in a certain way. The result is then routed to a digital-to-analog converter, which in turn outputs the sound. By building data flows called patches, it is possible to synthesize multitude of sound effects or create filters to transform existing sounds. The only limiting factor is creativity and computer processing power. Surely there must be a good reason why would anyone want to use procedural audio in their projects. And indeed, there are many. Flexibility. If the sound object model is designed accordingly, these can be later used in a flexible way. For instance, an explosion sound model can be made to generate small or large-scale explosions, or hundreds of unique impact sounds simulated without the need to go out and re-record or even change a single line of code. This is especially useful in non-linear sound design for games or interactive installations. Scalability. The greatest pitfall of all recorded audio is the quality. Aside from background noises and humming that can ruin a good take, we also have to consider audio resolution. There are two crucial parameters, the sample rate and bit depth. Once a sound is sampled at a certain resolution, say 44.1 kHz at 16 bit, there is no way to increase the quality simply because there is no data between the sampling points. We can only degrade it. This is not the case with procedural audio. Synthetically generated sound can be rendered at any resolution, be 22 or 192 kHz. As long as your hardware can handle it, there are no practical limitations. And since it's generated real time, we also avoid issues with limited storage. With that being said, think of sound as process as opposed to sound as product. Procedural audio is not perfect. Many naturally occurring sounds contain intricate layers of oscillators and resonators. This makes some sound models extremely complex and impractical, such as humans' voice. Voice synthesizers are far from convincing, and nothing can replace real actors' emotions. It is also important to understand that procedural audio is not a complete replacement of sound recordings and Foley artists. It is a merely another tool in sound designers' toolbox.